I am a Fate fan. Shocker, I know. But being somebody who is into the entire Nasuverse, I often see a lot of people struggling with where to begin, which makes a lot of sense after thinking about it. Unlike something linear like say Dragon Ball, Fate has a lot of branches and is released in a non-chronological order. So I said fuck it, I'll make my own little introduction into the Fate franchise and in today's video I will be listing every single piece of relevant Fate media, where in the general timeline it fits and in what order I recommend entering the franchise. For the people who do not know what the Fate franchise actually the entails, here is a short summary I device that covers the main concept of the series in a relatively spoiler free manner. Fate is staged in a world that is mostly identical to our own but with a slight twist. There exist mages and magic. These mages formed a ritual that was dubbed the Holy Grail War. This ritual was designed to collect a large amount of magical energy to fuel a wish granting device that could help these mages with achieving their ultimate goal of getting closer to the root of all things. The magical energy is gathered through the use of servants. These servants are heroic spirits of old that fight alongside their masters against other master and servant pairs. They do this in a 7 vs 7 battle royale where the last pair standing obtains the Holy Grail. This is the most basic introduction I can give you to the concept of the Fate franchise as a whole. For starters, I will be splitting up the Fate media in three categories. Light novels, animation and manga. These are the primary sources of media with which we can experience the Fate franchise as casual fans. For the sake of my own sanity, I will only be including actual anime, manga and light novels on the timeline you will see throughout this video. Things like video games will be mentioned here and there but will not be included in the timeline. On your screen right now, now you can see a beautifully constructed timeline of every piece of fate media and cue me praying that I did not forget one because that's entirely possible but if I do forget one please just mention it to me in the comments and I will explain it to you if I can fit its place in the timeline. But this timeline is designed to show the in-universe chronological order of events and not the release date of the actual pieces of media. After this I will be giving my recommendation on which piece of media I recommend to start with and a general order in which I recommend you actually watch them. To start off, we have a couple of events that have not been translated into any type of media just yet. Um, these being the First Grail War in 1814, the Second Grail War in 1874 and the Third Grail War in 1934. We will surely get some sort of adaptation of story on these Grail Wars in the future, but as of right now we are left guessing. Before we move into the real start of the Fate series as we know it, we have one non-canon branch off between the 3rd and 4th Grail Wars. Fate Redline takes place around 1940 where a boy is sent back in time to fight in this pseudo Grail War. Fate Redline is currently being adapted in manga form and features a lot of historic figures from ancient Japan as its servants. Moving on, we get to our first real split. Depending on if the Einsbern family summons the Avenger servant Angra Mainyu or the ruler servant Amakusa Shiro Tokisada, the timeline changes. If Avenger is summoned, the timeline moves into the main canon of Fate Zero. If Ruler is summoned, the timeline moves into the non-canon Fate Apocrypha. Because we are moving down this timeline in a chronological order, we arrive at Fate Zero first. Fate Zero marks the earliest piece of Fate media in the chronological timeline we have gotten in animated form. Here we follow the father figure of a character we will get into a bit later and the town of Fuyuki is chosen as the grounds for this Grill War. Seven masters utilize seven servants in a battle royale to obtain the right to wish upon the Holy Grill. Fate Zero has a total of two seasons. As you have probably noticed, there is a diverging path that offshoots just before Fate Zero occurs. There exists a timeline within the Fate universe where a certain incident causes all the mana to start disappearing from the Earth around 1970. This leads into the Fate Extra timeline. We will arrive at this timeline at the very end of this chart so please do look forward to that segment. Fate Zero has multiple possible timelines it can create based on what happens in the Grill War. Whilst we don't know what these exact actions are, we do know that if a certain set of choices are made, the story diverges into the Fate Collide timeline and if another set of choices is made, we get the events of Lord Elmoloy's case files which does seep back into the main continuity of Fate Stay Night in some fashion, but I wouldn't exactly consider it canon. Lord Elmoloy's case files has two seasons and Fate Apocrypha has one season. As you can see, Fate Zero leads into three separate series that take place at the exact same time. 
This is because Fate was originally a visual novel with three main roots. Fate Stay Night, where the spotlight is on the relationship between Shiro, the son of the main character of Fate Zero, and the servant he summoned. Fate Unlimited Bladeworks focuses on the relationship between Shiro and another mage who fights in his real war, Tosaka Rin. And Fate Heaven's Feel focuses on the relationship between Shiro and his friend Sakura. Because this was originally a visual novel, the story of each of these adaptations is similar, but depending on key choices, the narrative would diverge into one of the three possible roots. Fate Stay Night consists of one season, Fate Unlimited Bladeworks consists of two seasons, and Fate Heaven's Feel consists of three separate movies. You may have noticed that there is an image on the card for Fate Stay Night, and this is because Fate Stay Night is not actually the first iteration of the story. The very first draft of the story was adapted into Fate Prototype. This is essentially a very similar story to Fate Stay Night, except the characters differ, and Fate Apocrypha can also be seen as a parallel to Fate Stay Night. Fate Prototype consists of one OVA episode. Previously, we deduced that there was one more diverging path from Fate Zero that led into the events of Fate Calade. In this timeline, something happened that prevented the Grill War from ever being started again. The main character this time around is a character that is in both Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night, this character being Ilya. This adaptation of Fate uses the magical girl setting to implement some familiar concepts in unique ways. Fate Calade has four seasons and one canon movie. Eight months after the events of Fate Stay Night, we have the events of Fate Hollow Ataraxia. This story takes place in a dreamlike world that has events of each of the three Fate visual novels overlap and interact with one another. This is the only game that I have actually placed on this timeline that does not have an anime or manga adaptation, but since the events directly reference canon source materials, I felt it was worth putting on this timeline anyway. Next up we have Carnival Phantasm. This is a complete joke entry in the Fate franchise, it combines the entire Nasuverse which consists of Tsukihime, Kara no Kyokai, Witch on the Holy Night, and Fate into one big cesspool of comedy skits. This entry is not to be taken seriously in any way, it is purely meant for entertainment purposes and to just entertain the slightly more knowledgeable Fate fan. Carnival Phantasm has one season. Fate Strange Fake takes place around 2009 where a group of US mages recreates the first Holy Grail War in a false manner. So keep in mind that the events of Fate Zero did not take place here. In this separate continuity this is the actual fourth real war. The fun thing about this entry is that we will actually be getting an anime adaptation of Fate Strange Fake in summer of 2023. This entry into the Fate series does not really fit anywhere on the timeline so I just place it around the year where it, you know, where it took place. Moving down we have Fate Grand Order. And yes, before anybody takes to the comments, I did say that I would not include any games on this timeline, but Fate Grand Order being a gacha game should not be on here. While that is true, the reason I have included Fate Grand Order is that the game has multiple movie, anime and manga adaptations. There are short OVA episodes like Lost Room, uh, movies like the Camelot Singularity or the Grand Temple of Time Solomon, and the recent Babylonia anime. Fate Grand Order just has too big of an impact on the Fate animated media that it would just be criminal to not include them on this timeline. And the fun thing is, it actually fits pretty neatly. The context of the game is that in the year 2015, the incineration of humanity begins completely annihilating all human life. The last lone surviving master must travel to singularities to obtain holy grails and use their power to prevent humanity from certain annihilation. It's actually a really cool story. Next to Fate Grand Order we have Fate Grand Carnival. This is the exact same thing as Carnival Phantasm, except the characters are characters from the Fate Grand Order franchise, and this is really just meant to be fun for players of the game or Fate fans in general who have a bit more in-depth knowledge. Next up we have Fate Requiem, which takes place in 2025. Here everyone possesses their own personal holy grail to summon a servant of their own. Everyone but Eris. Eris then meets a lonely boy, the very last servant summoned in this world. This is a very unique take on the concept of the Grill Wars since literally everyone has a servant. Fate Requiem is currently being serialized as a light novel. And finally we have Fate Extra. Fate Extra is essentially a series of games with an anime adaptation and we will focus on the anime for this video. Remember when we were talking about how there was one timeline that split off before the events of Fate Zero? This is the continuity that occurs when set certain event drives the world of its mana. Humanity has gone to the moon where they found the moon cell supercomputer. The consciousness of humanity was uploaded to the moon cell and a grill war consisting of 128 master and servant pairs took place in the virtual paradise of Seraph. This concludes the current Fate timeline. Obviously I left out some things here and there, but if I were to talk in depth about every single entry and every single thing on here, we would be here until the end of time, and my goal was to keep this video like 15 to 20 minutes. But we have now discussed the general timeline of events in the Fateverse. But where do you actually
actually begin, my personal recommendation would be to start with Fate Stay Night. This 26 adaptation is by far the lowest quality one, but it does signify the beginning of the franchise. Afterwards, I recommend watching the alternate version of Unlimited Blade Works and Heaven's Field to experience every possibility of the original visual novels. Followed by Fate Zero to get more context on the events that led to Fate Stay Night even happening. Once you have watched these pillars, it honestly does not really matter what path you take. You can even watch Fate Zero first and then move into the main three. It's just, if you start with one of these four, you just get a really good grasp of um, the entire Fate franchise. And it's just smart to begin with one of those pillars. Every single other piece of Fate media can be pretty much understood once you have seen any of these shows. And please don't let anybody pressure you into deciding your watch order. There will undoubtedly be people who will go, Oh my god, you didn't watch Fate Stay Night first? You aren't a real Fate fan. And honestly, fuck them. Like, seriously, just screw off. Like, let people enjoy things. I made this video to give all of you some context on where the anime takes place and where you could, you know, begin to get a smooth start. My ultimate goal is to just get more people interested in my favorite anime series. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It would really help get my channel featured in YouTube algorithm and you would never have to miss another video. With all that being said, I hope each and every one of you will have a wonderful day, keep being awesome, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.